family-run business that supplies period furniture and antiques is counting the cost of a blaze at its premises near Ipswich. Forty firefighters were called to heritage reclamations at Sproughton last night. The fire spread from a ground floor workshop to the first floor and roof. The business stocks architectural antiques and building materials and often supplies props for period dramas. To football and Lowestoft's game with Wrexham is one of the eye-catching ties in this weekend's FA Cup first round. We'll be focusing on that one tomorrow. But tonight the ties involving Colchester and Norwich who play against a team five divisions below them. But it's more than just a game for one Norwich player, as Donovan Blake explains. It's a special game for the football neutral. But for Norwich defender Michael Nelson, his club's visit to Poulton Rovers will be special for another reason. This one. The plight of North East toddler Sophia Tay has made national headlines. The two-year-old has a rare and aggressive form of cancer and her family have been trying to raise hundreds of thousands of pounds for life-saving treatment in the United States. Nelson's wife Dawn is a close friend of Sophie's mum Kareen, so the perfect opportunity to plug her case in the warm-up before Saturday's game. With the TV game coming up, I've asked the manager if we can wear t-shirts with uh, Sophie's picture on and the, the website address just to try and raise a little bit of awareness to raise a little bit of money to get her out there. Seven cows donated um, a large sum of money and you know, they've reached the, the 500,000 that they, they were looking for but that's sort of the, the initial um, sort of treatment really. Of course Nelson's main focus will be the match itself, a potential banana skin for City, especially with their opponents from Somerset reveling in the cup build-up at yesterday's press preview. The same applies to Colchester. There are three divisions between A.D. Boothroyd's team and Bromley who play in the Blue Square South. But six non-league teams have beaten the U's in recent years. We've seen them twice. I've been to see them personally so I know where they're good and where they're not so good and we'll be making sure we're uh, um, working out to exploit any weaknesses that they've got. Few will bet against Colchester and Norwich making progress on Saturday. And that's what Michael Nelson will be hoping for in his mission to help little Sofiates fight for life. Donovan Blake, Angley News, Norwich. A great cause, and that's a match you can see live on ITV1 this Saturday at lunchtime. Now to another good cause, a 12-year-old Ipswich girl has completed a major fundraising milestone by completing her 10th equivalent cross channel swim in less than a year. Florence Dicking completed the final lap of her latest 22-mile swim at Crown Pools in Ipswich. It means she's now raised £400 for the charity Aspire. Now, as you know, it's Guy Fawkes night and many of you will be getting ready to go to a firework display as we speak. But how many people still put guys on their bonfires? Well, at least one council in the region branding it an inappropriate. We thought we'd give our correspondent Claire McGlasson a mission to scour the region in search of a guy. So has she had any luck? Well, she joins us now from Ashton near Northampton. Claire, what's the answer, good or bad? Mission completed. I have found myself a guy. He has unfortunately been engulfed by flames on the top of the bonfire behind us there. But let me tell you, it was no easy feat trying to find myself a guy today because Guy Fawkes Night is not what it used to be. So I've been back to basics here in Northamptonshire where the tradition began. A monument to what might have been one of the haunts where legend has it the gunpowder plot was hatched. We are plotting and planning behind closed doors. We are growing in numbers and so is our cause. You have crushed our beliefs and silenced our priests with your oppression, aggression and unholy laws. Lived in New Build near Oundle has become a symbol of the Guy Fawkes story. When the owner himself, one of the Catholic conspirators, accidentally gave the game away. This was created 400 years ago by Sir Thomas Tresham. He died in September and then his son became embroiled in the gunpowder plot. Francis was always known as a bit of a blabbermouth and obviously if you're planning to blow up the House of Parliament, having a blabbermouth within your team isn't a particularly good idea. The rest really is history. Parliament was saved, Guy Fawkes tortured and with his death Guy Fawkes Knight was born. A story known off by heart by some of Anglia's younger viewers back in 1959. Oh, well, he was a man who tried to blow up the House of Parliament. Oh, why did you try to do that? 
Well, uh, he was a Catholic, and at that time, the Catholics were being prosecuted. Persecuted? By, by James I? Yes. Mm. Well, he's the person who tried to blow up the Parliament. Why? Do you know why? Well, stop. Well, not really. The man who blew up all the houses. Of? Of the Parliament. But 400 years after the plotters had disappeared from the Tower of London, guys are vanishing from our bonfires. These days, a good guy is hard to find. Which makes me wonder, are we losing the plot? Is Guy Fawkes Night being replaced by another festival? So what do you prefer? Um, bonfires and fireworks, or do you like Halloween? Halloween. I like dressing up and going, going out to Halloween parties. Have you ever made a guy to go on a fire? No. Do you, do you know what it is when you put a guy on the fire? Mm. At Livedon New Bill today, the local children unveiled their school project, part of a multimedia show that will tell the gun plot story here this evening. Making sure we remember, remember the 5th of November, but not forget the reason why. It's true, isn't it? You just don't see Penny for the guy anymore. What happened to it, Claire? Well, you heard from the children there that Halloween seems to be taking over, but in terms of the official bans on guys, Cambridge City Council is an example. I'm afraid it's the two usual suspects, health and safety and political correctness. Now, they are concerned that the guy may fall off and injure a member of the public. Or that, in fact, they say it's inappropriate nowadays to be burning a human effigy. That hasn't stopped them here tonight in Ashton. And we can speak now to Julie in the crowd, who's one of the organisers. Hello. It's quite a rare thing now to have a guy on a bonfire. Why is it so important here? Here in Ashton, it's all about tradition. And um, the school have been happily making the guy over the last few days. And the infant class have all contributed. And... Um, it's been running here as an event for over 15 years now and the, um, the old crown here in Ashton very kindly hosts the event and um, it's all about fundraising for the school and um, like I say, it's all about tradition here. Well, just briefly, we've got the head teacher here as well. I bet the kids absolutely love the, the, the story of Guy Fawkes with all the, all the gore and the intrigue and everything else. Is it a good history lesson for them? It is, absolutely, yes. And something like that, as you say, gore and intrigue is something that I remember and it's an port important part of our history. But we also fit in all sorts of other curriculum areas. You know, rules for safety and writing thank you letters to organisers and people who've done it. So we cover a lot. Well, thank you for inviting us along tonight. The fireworks are just about to start. Before we go, I should just mention Ethan here. It's his birthday on Guy Fawkes tonight, so he gets fireworks every year for his birthday. Back to you. We're going to go and enjoy some sparklers now. I think I've got one in the crowd. Yay! No, it's gone out. All right, back to you. Bye. Yeah, they have a habit of doing that. Thanks, Claire, and happy birthday, Ethan. Yeah. So, next up after Bonfire Night, it's got to be Christmas. It is. And if you're having a Christmas turn on, carol service, or festive event, and you'd like us to know about it, mm -hmm. then get in touch. Yeah, and the email address is a very festive, Jonathan and Becky at ITV.com. Should we play the music in there? Uh, jingle bells. So, do get in touch with your details and do give us your name as well. Yes, right. Well, Bonfire Night tonight, of course. Nice weather in Ashton there. What do you want for a Bonfire Night? Uh, no wind, no cool, rain. I think. But yes, but because you can get nice and close to the fire and get all <laughs> toasty. Let's find out all the details. Here's Amanda Houston.